Okay, welcome back, or welcome to, or just welcome. This is the Top 5 Podcast, and my name's Chris McPeak. I serve as your main host for this exploration into pop culture, uh, beautiful madness, and I am joined today by my sister, Annie Pruitt, who is a frequent co-host of the show. So nice to see you this evening. It is always nice to see you. We This is the first time we've seen each other's faces since our Kansas, my Kansas trip, where we were able to record some episodes in person, which was delightful. Absolutely. And yeah, so it's it's good to see you, Annie good Mayer Pruitt. You, 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 make look lovely. you look lovely in your My Chemical Romance t-shirt. As usual, as usual, Annie's wearing some fantastic pop culture thing on her body. And I'm wearing a stupid, the journey is real old Navy thing. Cause I'm technically in my pajamas, but y'all didn't need to know that. Um, (laughs) And and now you know it, whatever. Um, (laughs) That's what makes the show fun. That one makes the show fun. Well, maybe one of these days we'll put video up. We've discussed it. We're just not doing it yet. Yeah, I just need somebody to come do my hair and makeup because I'm not very good at that. I can't wait for you to retire and see if we can cut your hair. Retire again? A retire again, yeah. Wait, never mind. I don't know why I said that. That doesn't make any sense. Um, you're already retired. Maybe we'll edit that part out. Or maybe yes. we won't. <laughs> it's, all, it's all, you know, everybody loves the outtakes. So everybody loves the outtakes. That's what makes yeah. this show so real too, like. Absolutely. Not scripted. Anything goes. We just say what we want to say and do what we want to do. Is that yeah. a line from Bad Reputation? It, I don't know. It should It should be. <laughs> but speaking of Bad Reputation, what's our subject yes. matter tonight? Our subject matter is Joan Jett cover songs. And we chose this topic because Joan Jett did not actually record a whole lot of original material that is true so we're going to go with the, the the cover songs that you know all the all the songs that we loved uh all her covers that we loved the most because that was like 90 percent of her music it's true and you know annie what's so fascinating about that is that is just not even something that i considered until you brought it up and then of course i had to rabbit hole down that um to be like, all right, wait a minute. This can't be right. <laughs> Surely right. she wrote some yeah. more, some more stuff. Um, yeah. And I think you know the the things that were ironically her her biggest hits were songs that that were written and performed prior to her recording them by other bands. Which you know exactly. that's not a bad thing because as far as I'm concerned, Joan Jett can fucking cover whatever the fuck she wants because she Absolutely. is the queen of rock and roll. Hell yeah. Okay, so do you want to do do you want to do honorable mention first and then count down, or do you want to do honorable mention prior to number one? Because you know we mix it up sometimes here on the we top. We do mix it up. I can I can actually start with my honorable mention first. Yeah, the floor is yours, my darling. Okay, so and and this is a little extra special because we like we literally just saw her in concert. Um, a little over a week ago. Yes, uh, that's and true. Was, you know, completely cathartic because we've loved her. Been literally waiting 40 years for this moment. Um, <laughs> yes. And she did sing the song. So, I mean, I think she sang, actually all the all the songs that, I, that are on my list, I want to say that she actually, well, anyway, most of them she sang. So my honorable mention is Everyday People. So uh-huh. it's a cover of the 1968 uh-huh. Sly and the Family Stone song. And what was funny is as she was singing it (laughs) and I'm listening to the lyrics again, you know, I remember listening to it when she covered it in what year did she cover this? Um, 83, 1983. Okay. And the lyrics are absolutely like from 1969 to 1983 to today, here we are. And, and the song is still just as relevant as it was back then. Isn't that crazy? Um, it's like we're still trying to get this right. It is crazy. Yes. But she she rock she rocks it and her voice sounds like today it sounds just as good as it did in 1983. So that's my that's my honorable mention. I love that song. I love the way she covers it. I love watching her rock out. 
Yeah. Absolutely. And well, I will, that's on my list too, but I, I will okay. hold the reveal until the number and then I'll, I'll share the thing I want to share. So my honorable mention is I want to be your dog from the, oh my God, what's the album? It's the album that has, I hate myself for loving you on it. And I did not realize that was a cover song until I heard the original performance by Iggy Pop and the Stooges. Okay. And the more that I go through that, it's like, okay, well, this, this totally makes sense. And there it's a fairly, it's a very relevant cover. And it's, it's, uh, you know, like Joan Jett owns things, but I think she honors the, the original artist by not making the song too much her own. Does that make sense? And in, yeah, in this yeah. particular case, it works because, you know, I it just never occurred to me that she was, she was remaking someone else's tune. Um, but, you know, I going down the punk rock rabbit hole of late. So anyway, that's my honorable mention. Yeah. I want to be your dog. I like that one. I, I, well, I, can, uh, I can get on board with that one. Well, all right. Okay. All right. So my number five is going to be Toss It and Turnin' yeah. from, from 1983 a Bobby Lewis cover uh -huh. um, for a very long time. It, it wasn't a big, it wasn't a big single. It wasn't a big hit, but it's still a super fun song to me. It was my wake up song <laughs> for, for my alarm <laughs> clock for about six months. Um, but it's just fun. And she takes, you know, kind of this, you know, bubblegum pop song and turns it into a, like the Joan Jett rock. But like you said, she doesn't stray too far from the original, you know, kind of the, the original idea of what the song's about so yeah uh, I love it toss it and turn in from 1983 I love that song and I love the place where that song is on the album because if I'm not mistaken the French song is the song that leads yeah. into that and there's just something about the way the French song ends and toss it and turn and begins the transition is beautiful and yes. and I I love just the anticipation of like oh that's the next song coming very cool yes Absolutely. All right. My number five is Summertime Blues, which I don't think was ever on a standard Joan Jett album. I found it because it was on the Flashback album. And this is a song that was originally performed by Eddie Cochran. See, I'm really proud of you, Annie. You did your research this time and I am a little bit behind. Um, okay. But Summertime Blues, I think is great. I love the the upbeat playfulness of it. And I, I have a playlist that's on a, a CD somewhere. And I, I love playing that song right next to Kenny Chesney's Summertime. The two yeah. meld together really nicely. And they're both just the kind of tune that you're going to crank way, way, way up on the rate on the, the radio, whatever, um, and, and sing along to. So that's my, that's my number five summertime blues. Yeah. You have that on your summer playlist. I do. Yeah. yeah. I freaking love that song. It's, it is, yeah. so, it is so fun and, uh, cute. Yeah. And youthful. It's a very um, youthful song. I, yes, absolutely. Um, all right. So my number four is actually, I've kind of been going back and forth on this. Um, I think my number four is going to have to be, do you want to touch me? Oh, um, hilarious. Okay. And I, of course it was covered first in, by, by Gary Glitter, uh -huh. who I hate Gary Glitter. And I'm, so I'm so glad that like Joan <laughs> covered good song. Um, so it came out, she did it in what year did she do it? 1981. Um, yeah, that was 1981, on the bad reputation. Yeah, so that's my number four. She she sings it like a like just oozing rock and roll. Um, and if you ever looked at the original like LP of, or the the single, yeah, she's rocking that you know the headband and she's looking so very very 80s, but she's looking hot and and rock and roll and awesome all at the same time. Um, and I love it that it also has a little bit of staying power because, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow sang, sang it in the Glee, yes, the Glee uh, TV totally. show. Um, so it's like when, when Gwyneth sang it, she was singing the Joan version, not the Gary Glitter version. Right? Okay. Um, 
If you I've only heard that. the glary so glitter version once. Oh, I'm sorry. I will. Yeah. No, no, you're right. No, and, and Gary Glitter is a, a piece of shit. I mean, so uh, <laughs> you know, anybody that can do anything better than Gary Glitter, I'm all about it. So um, that's a, that's another story. But so that's my, my number four is, do you want to touch me? When she sang in a concert, it's like the one song that got the entire crowd into it. Yeah. Um, it was awesome. Yeah. Um, I didn't even know, again, a, a surprise to me that that was a cover until I heard it in the background in the movie, The Runaways. Um, uh, where she goes, I guess when she meets Cherie Curry for the first time, she goes into a bar and that song is playing in the background. Um, but I, I will have to research Gary Glitter because I don't really know anything about him other than now that, you know, he recorded that song. He's a pedophile. Oh, great. That's, okay. Yeah. Tasty. So let's just keep that off the, off the topic. All right. Very good. Yeah. So my number four was your number. No, your honorable mention was every, my number four is everyday people. Okay. Um, for all of the same reasons that, that you had it on your list. And I will tell you that when that song came out, we were still living in Arkansas. I was in high school and the radio station that we would listen to for our pop and, and rock music was KISR, Kisser 93, maybe, or 94, yep. something Kiss like 93. that. Yep. And so Joan recorded two versions of this on the album and there was a radio edit and then there was the extended dance mix. Yes. And Kisser actually played the extended dance mix on the radio. So that is the version of the song I was initially introduced to until I bought the cassette. And then I was like, wait a minute, this is not what's on the radio until you get to the flip yeah. side. And then you see, oh, there's the extended dance mix. So that is the one that I like the most. And it is number four on my list. Okay. I love that. I, I had a feeling that we were going to have a few overlaps on this. Indeed. Particular, yeah. Um, I figured as much. Right. Yeah. So my number three, I'm kind of going back and forth on this. I'm going to go with, so my number three, I'm going to go with uh, Crimson and Clover, 1981. Yeah. It was the B, so cover, you know, Tommy James and Shondells. It was the B side. I will confirm that. <laughs> Yeah, um, but um, it's one. I actually I love the I love the original, uh, but I love Jones version more. I heard Jones version first, so that's the one that I you know go back to. Yeah, um, it's been on my my regular song playlist, so you know my kids even know this song at this point. Um, it's fun. She sings the lyrics true to the original form. So she doesn't change genders, you know, and that's, I like that she wasn't yeah. afraid to say, you know, to, to use the original lyrics for the song. And this was yeah. again, back in, in 1981, um, that she was fearless even back then, but mm -hmm. she does a great cover of it. And then yeah. it's a great song. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so that's a my, fan that's of my, yeah of Crimson and Clover. That is one of Charles's favorite Joan Jett songs. So we will often play that when we're traveling around. Um, it, that's a good one for sure. Oh, um, I'm wrong about the beast. It was not the B-side to I Love Rock and Roll. Oh, okay. Yeah. What, what, Victim yeah. of Circumstance, right? That's right. Uh, it's, it's saying right here that the B-side to Crimson and Clover is, oh, woe is me, but I don't remember that at all. Oh, woe is me? Yeah. That is on, I think that was from Bad Reputation. Yeah. Oh, no. Nah, okay. Interesting. I'm starting to doubt my Wikipedia knowledge or, or my Wikipedia <laughs> friend. Well, and so, you know, so I let me down. We did still, when these songs were coming out on the radio, we were still buying 45s at Walmart. Um, yeah. And I Love Rock and Roll came out when I was still in junior high school. So I had that 45. Um, you did? I did, yeah. And it, I, I remember, because that album cover for, for I Love Rock and Roll, I'm not crazy about it. I don't like that look on her. Um, and whatever the cover was for the 45, I remember not liking it either, but that's okay because it's Joan and 
you know, Joan can look yeah. however, however you want it, Joni. Okay. My number yes. three is a repeat and it's, do you want to touch me? Oh yeah. Again, for all the reasons that you shared before, I will say that I think that is probably the sexiest song that she um, has in her repertoire. I, I yes. love the beat. I love the, you know, the, the whiskey and rye don't make you feel so fine. And I don't know. Yeah. Do, I think, do you want to touch me is almost like a dare. And, and I love the attitude in that, I in that song. That. Um, yeah. Um, and I love singing at a karaoke, especially when I've had a couple of rounds and I'm feeling a little randy. Um, I have yeah. been known, <laughs> I have been known to grab a crotch or two, not necessarily my own, um, during the performing of that song. So, uh, yeah. Number three for me, do you want to touch me? Oh yeah. Uh, oh Yes. Yeah, it kind of goes with, along with like the divinals. I touch myself. I could, I yes. could kind of do like a whole medley of, of of those kind of songs and try to feel sexy. But I, I you know, now I don't think anybody <laughs> wants me to see that. <laughs> Top five songs about <laughs> masturbation. <laughs> do we go there? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. my number two <laughs> is "You Don't Own Me." Yeah, a cover of the 1963 Leslie Gore song. Um, yes, I think again, I heard Joan first before the original, and uh, that's that that's the version that sticks with me. Um, I other people have tried to cover it, but for the most part coming out and saying you know this is you don't you don't get to do this to me but uh I've always loved that song and yeah. it's, it's always been on my playlist and that's my number two you don't know me and that is she, um, just, she 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 brings rock to it uh, like yeah. like Leslie Gore could never do um yeah yeah, yeah and again yeah. it's it's an attitude um it's it's Joan's attitude of it's exactly what she brings when she, you know bad reputation. I don't give a damn. And yes. nothing that you, you know, you're not the boss of me. So I'm no. going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And exactly. So, yeah, I mean, even, even the Leslie Gore innocence of it all and sort of the, like, I want to be an independent woman, you know, so you don't own me. But Joan's just kind of shoving that up in your face, yes. which oh, I yeah. think is, is awesome sauce. Yeah. Okay. Especially goes into the don't tell me what to do I'm just like oh I love it I yeah love it. yeah it's a it's a it's a powerful the chorus for her is very powerful yeah very powerful okay so my number two has changed since okay. I, I since I started um since I plotted out this list probably a little over a month ago because as I was preparing for my trip to visit you and preparing to see Joni in concert I went back and re-listened to as many of her albums as I could and in particular I listened to the hit list because it, it took me a couple of rounds uh, over a long period of time to realize that that was all cover songs um, yeah. and I recognized some of them immediately like Dirty Deeds and Have You Ever Seen the Rain um, which are our dirty deeds was on the cover song episode that I did with Chris Corral. Um, mm -hmm. So in revisiting the hit list, I discovered pretty vacant and mm -hmm. that is my number two. And, <laughs> and so this has happened since I, you know, have done my, my learning piece uh, on punk rock music and had just finished, finished watching that sex pistol show on, on Hulu on FX and but you can tell when Joan performs pretty vacant I knew the second that she went into the chorus like oh she's covering a sex pistol song and yeah. then you know it's it's a, a plot point in the show so that I mean I've probably played this song 20 times since then just yeah. like I friggin love this song um and her her cover is is spot on and it is very 
very genuine to exactly. And, you know, for punk rock music, for rock music in general, and the whole UK movement, like Mm -hmm. the Sex Pistols only made that one record, but they made an indelible impression on the, on the world of music specifically. Um, and I, that song is a, a piece of that. So I, I love that, that Joan Jett has made that, you know, her own as well and, and added that to that album. Yeah. Oh yeah. I had a feeling you were going to go there um, <laughs> because, and here's, here's where, where you and I will agree about the greatest, one of the greatest things about Joan Jett. Yeah, she can cover the gamut. I mean, everything from you know 1969 Leslie Gore to yep. the 1977 Sex Pistols to you know current day uh, uh, I don't know ACDC you know you name it. Um, she can cover anything and not uh, like not make the original like not not be offensive towards, you know, the original artist, right. but, you know, pay homage to the original artist, yes. make it her own, but still keep, you know, keep the integrity of the song. Um, so I, I love that you picked that song, especially after, you know, watching Sid Nancy that, and, you know, yes. talking more about the whole punk rock and the sex. That's right. Sex. So, yeah. And so, all right. So my number one is from the same album. Um, and, have you ever seen the rain by yeah. CCR from 1970 so again Joan released this album in 1990 I didn't get it until uh, I got to college uh, with uh-huh. you my in my sophomore year is when I actually bought it um oh wow I played that song, like non-stop over and over and over I think I drove my roommate crazy um I, I I'd heard I'd heard the CCR version obviously many times but I love the way Joan sang it so much better. And I can't, I can't tell you why. It's something about her, something about the way, um, the way when she sings, the way I feel, I, I immediately connect with her. Um, and that's why we love her. That's why, you know, I waited 40 years to see her concert. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I think, I think you turned me on to that version of that song. I probably... I probably had that CD or that cassette because I was, I was quite a collector of artists that I like, but I didn't all, I never, sometimes I just didn't listen to the full thing. I would listen to the couple mm-hmm. songs that I liked and I wouldn't move on to the rest. So yeah. my memory is telling me that, that you were the one that said, you need to listen to this song. Cause it's friggin' oh, Yeah. Entirely Definitely. possible. Yeah. All right. Well, that that's a good one. I flirted with that being on my list, but I figured it would be on yours. Um, yes. And the more I I dig into the history of of Joan Jett and all of her all of her covers and things, the more that I'm convinced that this is not just my favorite Joan Jett cover, but my favorite Joan Jett song. And that is "Light of Day," originally uh. written by Bruce Springsteen. And the title song for the Light of Day movie where she starred with Michael J. Fox. Um, And I'm just going to put it out there. I haven't seen the movie, probably because the idea of Michael J. Fox being a rocker and roller kind of freaks me out a little bit. Um, And yeah, I'm just I'm perfectly happy putting light of day on, on Apple music or whatever, and playing it over and over and rocking out. And I love the, the bridge that builds into the the chorus. Um, I'm a little tired out, but I'm doing okay. And I got a little lost along the way. And then it shoots right up into that, just around the corner to the light of day. And I friggin' love that build. Um, and that there's so much energy and just, pop in awesomeness in that in that song so yeah. that is my number one light of day I love that well and so I have not seen the movie either but I can see Michael J Fox as rock and roll because I mean back to the future you know going up there and playing Johnny B good <laughs> I suppose as, that's, as a that's high school true. dance yeah um but uh and but uh I, I never saw her as an actress, and I want to say that was one, her one and only movie. I, she has a filmography, but I haven't looked at yeah. it because I don't, I, you know, I just don't see her that way. But yeah. I don't know. I could give the movie a try. Why not? 
and, and I, and, and now I think, um, well, I, cause I learned again, you know, go, go is Kathy Valentine. I'm obsessed with Kathy Valentine. Um, and her memoirs covered that after the go-go's broke up, she was actually, uh, in line to have this role. And, oh, wow. and they gave it to Joan Jett instead because Joan Jett was more of a name at that time, which I understand, you know, you say yeah. that those people knew who you're talking about. You say Kathy Valentine, um, maybe people did not know who you were talking about, but, you know, yeah. thinking about it, it's like, well, okay, that didn't happen to Kathy for a specific reason and every, everything's okay that it didn't. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but you know, it's all good. Well, maybe that's something yeah. that we get together and watch the next time we hang out. We'll check it out. Okay. Yeah. It so I'll, I'll do my recap and I'll, and I'll recap why I love Joan Jett. So my honorable mention was everyday people. Yeah. And then from five to one, it went tossing and turning. Do you want to touch me? Crimson and Clover, you don't own me. And then have you ever seen the rain? Beautiful. And again, Joan Jett is, is completely totally unapologetic you know somewhat of a private lifestyle but you know has been very open and very supportive of all types of genders and sexuality and yeah still doesn't like she doesn't proclaim anything because i think it like for her it's better to just be like let people wonder um I, or just like let me that's my private life and yeah let me be at my private life yeah I, agree. I so respect that i think that's a, that makes her like actually a really good role model she's yeah. been uh, she's had her ups and downs i'm sure but she's like fit as she she looks amazing i like yeah. i don't know how old she, she's rocking the biceps you know and she oh looks, my god her arms were wonderful. hot holy crap yes. yes so i just uh i think she's a great role model i think she still plays great to the crowd She's okay to be the opener to some shitty, you know, hair bands. <laughs> to go yes. out there. And uh, she was the best part of that show. Um, yes. And I'm so glad that I actually got to experience, you know, seeing her live. It was amazing. Yeah. I, I completely echo all of your sentiments there. And that, especially that we got to see that show together. Um, yeah, we just, that's kind of been a theme for, for 2022, which has been beautiful. So maybe, uh, maybe Melissa Etheridge will tour in December or something and we can go see her. Um, Annie just crossed her fingers. So, um, recapping for me, my honorable mention was, I want to be your dog. And then five, four, three, two, one summertime blues, everyday people. Do you want to touch me? Oh yeah. Pretty vacant and light of day. Excellent. Another Excellent. top five list in the books for Chris and Annie. And, and we have some fun stuff coming up as well. Yes. Working on, we're still working on our cover songs. We want to see made. And our, that is so hard. That yeah. is so hard. That yeah. is something I got to dig back into. Um, we'll be doing great soundtracks. That's a Chris and Annie show, right? Yes. And movies about high school is a Chris and Annie show. Yes. And yes. Our, we're bringing your fabulous kids back for something soon too, right? Yes. We're going to do some, we're going to do some horror movie lists. Yeah. We're going to talk about some, uh, some scary movies again with the kiddos. Yeah. Cause and I, I be, have taught them well, I must well, say. You have taught them well. You are an exceptional culture mom. And I'm looking here too. I'm looking at. Well, I, I'm a pop definitely. Yes, you are a pop culture mom. Oh, it would appear. Like it. Um, okay, so that will do it for this week's episode of the Top Five Podcast. For Annie Pruitt, I'm Chris McKee. Thank you for kicking it with us this week. Thank you.